Ahoy, Let's Watchers! It's me, your Valiant Captain Vasco, and welcome to the world of Skylanders! Yes, anyone who watches the other channel I post Let's Plays on, some sort of link will be here. Bing! Um, you may have already seen me try out Skylanders with my friend Tech. Well, for him it was trying it out, for me it was me trying to convince him to play, but he was underwhelmed. However, I do really enjoy this game, and so I'm gonna try and play through it for you. And, I don't know, I'm thinking I'll probably do my version of a 100% run on this, which is like, try and get all the collectibles for all the levels, but like, the time trial aspect of it's a little bit harsher than I'm gonna have fun playing, so I'm probably not gonna go that far. Uh, anyway, it'll be, it'll make a lot more sense what I'm talking about once we're playing. Unless, of course, you've already played this game, then you probably know what I'm talking about. But, uh, let's press start to begin, as prompted. I'm playing this on the Xbox 360, as I do with most games that I let's play. Yes, I understand that you save things. You are a video game. Let's start a new game. Now, um, uh, just as a point of interest, the way this game works, uh, if you've somehow missed out on all the advertising that was going on, especially in the fall of last year, um, it, you get this, like, USB-powered portal device, which is, I think it's an RFID reading machine? Anyway, you get these little figurines with computer chips in them, and they save all the data for your character and all the silly hats and gold that they've acquired towards leveling up to their fullest potential. Uh, but you also have a save file for your progress through the story mode of the game. Um, so if I was to take the, the characters that I had been using in my other games here uh, and just plopped them down and tried to start an entirely new game with them, they would still be level like 10 or whatever they were variously throughout my multiple playthroughs of this game. Um, I figured that in order to do a playthrough of this game the greatest justice possible, I should reset all my characters. So I'm not, yeah, stumbling over my words, sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, so all my characters are going to start at level 1 with no gold or hats or anything. Nothing going on. Again, some of these words and terminology will make a little bit more sense once we're in the midst of the game. So let's get on with that endeavor. And I think we'll be greeted with a cutscene as we Greetings, are in most games. young portal master. I have been waiting for you. I am Eon, your guide in this world. But where are you, you may ask? This is Skylands, an ancient world of wonder and mystery. For generations, the Portal Masters and the Skylanders kept peace and balance in this world so that all creatures could thrive. Magic flows through well, all creatures except for sheep. Every rock, every tree, and every beast. But now our world is in great danger. The darkness is spreading. Skylands needs your help. A great adventure awaits you, young Portal Master. I have sent my assistant Hugo to seek you out. We will speak again soon. Alright, so, here's your introduction to the world of Skylands. It's sort of a bunch of sky islands. More of an archipelago well, than a land, all really. Balloons leaving. Parking's gonna be a snap. They're not just leaving, they're evacuating. Something is terribly wrong. Oh, well that explains the flying rocks. Are you sure this is a good idea? Just go on, Flynn. Get to higher ground. I'll meet you on the other side of town. All righty-o. Good luck, Hugo. Yes, that is Patrick Warburton, for anyone wondering. Played David Putty on Seinfeld, among other things. Kronk and Emperor's New Groove. Fantastic movie. Probably underrated. I'm gonna try and keep this That's one uh, as kid-friendly as possible. He, coming. he said to be right here. First, the core explodes. Then, I start hearing voices. And now, I'm in the middle of a village being ripped apart by who knows what. Clearly, I am losing my mind. Now is the time, Portal Master. Alright, so, this screen means that it's time to put a Skylander on the Portal of Power and summon him into the game. 
I think the only suitable way to start this is with this particular Skylander. Showtime. Whoa! Spyro! You've returned! Master Eon was right! That means he did find another Portal Master to help us. I, of course, never doubted it for a second. <laughs> I know that you are watching, oh great Portal Master! I am Hugo, and we have much to do. This village needs our help. Hmm. Brevity of dialogue is not one of the strong suits of this game. I'm going to be entirely honest. But, uh, yeah, so for anyone wondering exactly what Skylanders is, apart from being a gimmicky dungeon crawler that encourages children to buy large numbers of action figures that don't actually do anything other than function as video game characters, it's uh, something of a colorful reboot for Spyro, who just went through, if I'm remembering this correctly, the Legends series, which uh, was not particularly popular, so they swung they swung the pendulum pretty far in the other direction and took things pretty light and colorful, instead of slightly more serious, is my understanding. But again, I've only played the really early Spyro games, so I'm not exactly entirely familiar with his series overall. Greetings, young Portal Master. I, Eon, will help you. Use your Skylander to break through obstacles and debris. Yeah, basically every uh, Skylander's character starts with two types of attacks. Your primary attack, which for Spyro is this fireball thing. Uh, and a secondary attack, which is his flaming ram charge. We all gone, but it's great to see you're here! That main road was destroyed, and now the townsfolk are all trapped inside! It's very dangerous! Taking down that wall seems like it might help! Maybe that old cannon will work! Yeah, this first level in particular is just completely dialogue heavy, which is really frustrating, especially since the uh, cutscenes in this game are completely unskippable. Let's ram through some stuff, make sure we're picking up treasure. This also tends to happen a lot. This treasure just sort of glitches and floats on top of things, completely unattainable. But, uh, yeah, taking the advice of our omnipresent narrator, we fire off this cannon and blast through this wall, freeing all those civilians. However, if you fire it off again, you will destroy a building in the distance and open up some special treasure for later. Which is something that one can hey, easily you're a overlook. Skylander, aren't you? I didn't know you guys were here. We could really use your help. Can you grab that key and get us out of here? Jeez, oh, I'm not sure I'll be able to solve this puzzle. I have a key, and they're trapped behind this locked gate. How does it work? Oh, right. Yeah, as my understanding is every console has a different way of uh, interacting with objects like the key. Uh, there's sort of like a subset of like puzzle objects, there's like, I think there's a pickaxe in some levels, there's these things called troll bombs which help you like, destroy certain obstacles. Um, anyway, if you look over here you'll see a glowing and floating piggy bank thing that's sort of mutant and scary. But uh, I'm gonna take this time, this opportunity, to switch characters. Now you may notice that all of the Skylanders on my team, and there are eight of them, one for each of the eight elements of s possible Skylander characters, each of them is named after a character from another video game. Um, Spyro is still called Spyro because I count the fact that Spyro came from another video game as naming him after a character from another video game. Anyway, this Phoenix Dragon character, known as Sunburn to anyone who's familiar with the games, I've chosen to nickname Phoenix Wright after one of my all-time favorite video game characters. There's a very particular reason I switched to him for picking up this treasure pig, and uh, I'm sure I'll have a chance to get into that in greater detail later on. Now, once again, we have a cannon facing an obstacle, and this obstacle has a glowing purple cannon icon next to it. Putting two and two together, if I fire this cannon, it will destroy the obstacle with the appropriate symbol on it. Now, across this gap you'll see a floating scroll that's emanating magical blue waves. Yeah, I can't get to that yet, but um, that's another one of the collectibles. In fact, let's take a quick second 
uh, check out the objectives for the level. Now, the ones I'm going to be aiming to get in each level are the ones on the far left, the chapter goals, and the ones on the far right, the collections goals. Uh, the chapter goals are pretty much just like completing the level for story's sake. The ones on the right are all the collectibles, including hats, which sort of function like equipment in this game. They sort of give you stat bonuses, but they're not usually particularly huge stat bonuses. Uh, then there's also treasure chests, which are full of, like, gold for you to buy moves and upgrades later on. Uh, the story scrolls, which are just sort of flavor text if you want to know more about the world of Skylands, but we'll pick them up anyway. And soul gems, which are actually very important if you want to max out all your characters. Soul gems, uh, each one is specifically linked to one character and unlocks a move for them to, to buy at the upgrade shop later on. So if you don't find their soul gem, you can't get all of their moves. Um, so it'll behoove you to try and track down those soul gems so you can max out your characters, whether or not you're planning on getting all 32 of the Skylanders characters, which I'm not necessarily going to recommend or not recommend. I think it's a little excessive for my purposes. So I have... I think I have like a dozen of them. I've got like one for each element, and then a couple doubled up, mostly from uh, picking up the adventure packs, because I wanted to get the extra levels for the game. Uh, I will be going through those extra levels, too. I'm not sure exactly when in the story I'm going to take those on, but I'm going to do that. I'm not going to bother talking to these characters who will once again explain, Oh no, keys and locks, it's very hard! Oh, am I so glad the Skylanders are here. Hope there are more of you. We have a doodle of a problem here. Doodle of a problem, you say? Go on. We're trapped on the other side of Turtle Gully. Gosh, I hope they're okay. Lobbers over there can't move that turtle. Could you please help him? You're not supposed to knock politely. You're supposed to push rudely. Don't you know that pushing makes everything go faster? It's like he's never been in a crowd before. By Pythagoras' theorem. You're a Skylander, aren't you? You know, they go to an awful lot of trouble to sort of characterize all these, like, random mole people in this first town. And most of them don't ever show up again. I mean, I get that this is a tutorial level, but I, th I really do think that there's, there's just too much talking. So yeah, these turtle puzzles, they're pretty straightforward. If you just, like, walk into the turtle hard enough, then he will move out of your way. Pretty simple. Oh, yeah, you want to watch out for ledges like this in various levels um, because they will prevent you from going back to where you came from. So if you miss out on something like that uh, piggy bank treasure and you, you want to get that so you have extra gold for your characters and you pass by something like this, well, you're out of luck. You're not going to be able to do that without replaying the level, which, you know, it's fairly easy to replay a level. But, uh, you know, it just saves you some time if you can notice these things and plan for them. Stay down there! Name's Flynn. You go told me to meet you. Boy, you got here just in time. I just in time for the death the tornado? Shatter. Come here and I'll show you. Use those bounce pads. They're super springy. You know what, Patrick Warburton? That sounds like an excellent idea, but I'm going to have to take a rain check on that. I'm gonna bring out my trusty friend Spyro once again, because there's more collectibles to be had before I'm jumping onto the top of mountains and stuff. Uh, I think I gotta push this turtle first. So let's scoot him over here. Yeah, that's right, now he bridges this gap. Now this opens up this little path down here, and introduces our very first elemental gate. You need a magic Skylander to unlock this gate. Well, luckily Spyro is a magic Skylander, so if I walk up to this ledge, then his magical nature will open up this light bridge, which lets me cross into this new area called the Turtle Hideout. Here you will see our first soul gem. So yeah, there's a lot of firsts going on over here. That's for a character named Chop Chop, who I have, and don't actually like very much, to be honest. He's got a really cool character design, but his attacks are lame, so I don't like him very much. As such, you will not see me playing with him during this run. Push the turtle over here, push this turtle over here. Now I can walk over here to this box. What's in the box, you must be asking yourself. Well, a few shakes of the right control stick reveal that it's our first hat. It is a Viking helmet, which adds 
five to our critical hit score. I don't actually know how much that influences your ability to get a critical hit with your attacks, but, you know, it's better than nothing. So Spyro's gonna wear this hat for a little while. Now that that's out of the way, I'll pick up this soul gem. And when you pick up a soul gem, it, it shows you what move that you unlock for that character. And then it also gives you the option to preview that character. Now just for the sake of showing you how this game works, I'm going to show you this first one. Chop Chop! So yeah, Chop Chop's sort of a skeletal gladiator guy. He uses a sword and a shield to defend against attacks and do damage, but he doesn't really have any good ranged attacks, and he's kind of slow and awkward to use, so he often ends up taking a lot of damage. It's, it's kind of problematic. A lot of the times when I was trying to use him, he would get KO'd at inopportune times, so I just decided to replace him with a much better Undead Skylander that I'll show you at some point in the near future. Let's pick up this story scroll, as it is also a collectible. While the shape and size of portals vary, under the control of a true portal master, these mystic devices can connect two points in space, dimension, and, if we are to believe ancient legends, even time. Portal masters can then send Skylanders and magic to the other side. Ooh, mystical. Yeah, most of the stories, well, all the story scrolls are read out by our good giant floating head friend, Eon, and, um, well, most of them contain some sort of pun or, like, odd bit of humor and some sort of backstory about the world. That one's more in the backstory vein. You see that, Twister? It's a big one. That's right. that death tornado I mentioned earlier. What we're gonna do is... Whoa! Hmm. Yeah, we should watch out for things like that, I think. That was close. It's okay. You go on ahead, and I'll take her around and meet you back here later. Alright. Oh, look at that. It's another treasure chest. Full of secret monies. But I can't really get to it right now, because it's this puddle of water. Hmm, you know what might help, though? A different Skylander. I'm gonna bring out my friend Gilgrunt, a.k.a. Jabu Jabu. You know, fishmen are surprisingly underrepresented in video games, so I had to go with an iconic fish that has no resemblance to a man. Anyway, some shaking of our right stick, as per usual when opening up some sort of treasury item. We unleash a bunch of random shiny things that are worth money. And that money will be very important when I want to upgrade my Skylanders later on. But, uh, I'm gonna switch back to my friend Phoenix Wright, because in a second we're gonna be introduced to our first battle. And I'm gonna want him to level up as quickly as possible, because while I really like Phoenix Wright, um, he's kinda... kinda weak at low levels. And we'll probably demonstrate that sooner rather than later. Thank goodness. I'd gladly escape this raging tornado, except these monster gates are in my way. Monsters always stake out their territory by putting up these gates. And these are particularly nasty little monsters, too. Hungry little chompies. Here's a pro tip. Chompies are not particularly nasty. I'm pretty sure they're actually the very weakest creatures in the game. Which is where you are? But don't worry. These gates will open once all of the monsters have been defeated. So all you have to do is just get rid of all of the choppies in there, and everything should be just fine. <laughs> Good luck. Oh, no big deal. All you gotta do is kill all of the monsters. Well, thanks, you weird, ferrety, mole creature. But yeah, even though uh, Phoenix right here starts off pretty weak, he can still dispatch these uh, choppies without really breaking a sweat. Check out his other move. Teleport explosion. His primary attack is his flamethrower thing. I should be making 
better notes on these. And uh, his secondary attack is the teleport. You can upgrade that later. Well, you can upgrade either one, or both to a certain extent, but we'll get we'll get to that when we start unlocking upgrades at the shop. These are elemental gates. Behind these kinds of gates are some great treasures, but they can only be opened by a Skylander of the same element. This is key. This is, uh, this is one of the uh, side effects to having eight elemental types of Skylanders. One of the things that makes one type of Skylander different from another is that, uh, is that they have the ability to open these elemental gates. As we've already seen, there's magic gates for guys like Spyro. We've got water gates for our friend uh, Jabu Jabu. And then we've got a, te a tech gate over there, excuse me. And uh, I'll show you who can unlock that one in just a minute. He's uh, he's a personal favorite of mine. I mean, I'm fond of everyone on the team that I'll be playing through this game with, but uh, this guy's he holds a special place in my heart. And <laughs> hopefully you'll understand why. Not too long. I'm gonna hold off on getting those treasures down there because first I'm gonna hop up here on these bounce pads and get another hat. This one is a pan hat, made of a frying pan, I guess. It's not a frying pan, it's too deep for that. It's more of a sauce pan, I guess? I don't know. I'm no good at cooking. Um, but uh, it gives me an armor boost and elemental power bonus. So sure, why not wear that? To be quite honest, normally I don't actually put these hats on my characters, but I figure it'll be wacky fun for you viewers at home. i pick up some coins over here. Some more treasure for my fish friend. You need a tech skylander. I do to need a tech this. skylander. And why don't I show him off right now? Please give a warm round of applause for Bomberman! His actual Skylander name is Boomer. But uh, again, going for a video game character theme. Uh, Boomer is just hilarious. Every time he shows up in a cutscene, I can't even describe it. Hopefully I'll be able to show it off for you in a satisfactory fashion. And uh, hopefully you will also share the same joy that I have <laughs> every time he's part of a serious conversation about the fate of our world. Oh, and look! Another hat! Spoiler alert, these boxes always have hats in them. I think Anvil Hat would suit my Bomberman quite nicely. Why don't we try it on for size? Give him a nice little armor boost. And, uh, you know, while I still have him out, primary attack is to throw sticks of dynamite, which explode on contact. And his secondary attack is the sweet ground pound, which sends enemies flying back. It's really good because, uh, you can send them flying away with the shockwave, and then use your ranged dynamite attacks to attack them without taking damage. It's a good combination, in my opinion. Let me know what you think if you played with him in the comments. As I said, Boomer's one of my favorites. But uh, I'll show off pretty much all of my favorites before uh, too many levels have passed. I don't want to go overboard uh, early on here and just uh, spend the entire episode showing off characters. But, um, you know, hopefully this gives you a taste of the variety of Skylanders in the Skylands. Man, I'm gonna get sick of saying Skylanders by the end of this Let's Play, I'll tell you what. Oh no, look, the royal family is trapped. You must save them. Oh look, it's more incredibly weak enemies. Whatever shall I do? I'm gonna call on a different one of my friends. Sheik, the life ninja elf Skylander. Yeah, she's a bit of an odd one. But, uh, you know, keeping with the video game theme, pretty happy that we have an elf ninja, because, uh, well, it makes the naming choice pretty obvious for anyone who's played uh, Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. Have a let's play of that over on the Renegade Constabulary channel, but uh, I don't recommend that one for the kitties. Kitties is a really condescending and awkward thing to call children. I don't know why I did that. I don't really like that term. Sorry about that. Boing. Oh, I didn't make it. That's awkward. Um, while we're here, let's show off. Primary attack is obviously this swordy knifey thing. Uh, if you press the buttons in the right combination, you can pull off a combo, which does like a dash attack and some extra damage. Her secondary skill is to, uh, 
Well, it's a... I'm not exactly sure how to describe this. She uses her ninja powers to distract you. See, the flashing white elf character isn't actually where her body is. She will only take damage if her disembodied glowing green eyes get hit. Uh, eventually, it will make more sense as uh, a decoy will be spawned in place where her uh, where her eyes or where her body is. Excuse me. But uh, yeah, for now, let's just let's just call it a ninja move and leave it at that. Pick up a bunch more treasure. This will be important. Now, the reason I'm busting out these characters early on, particularly Sheik and Phoenix Wright, is because I find that they're both kind of difficult to use at low levels, so I want to get them some extra gold early on so I can upgrade them quicker than the rest. Let's break open this lock and free the royalty! See, normally when you have an elf ninja stalking you, it's... It's not a good thing. You're probably gonna get assassinated. I.e. totally you killed. It. Thanks to you, all of the villagers managed to evacuate just in time. Yes, even though I took my sweet time going through this, this level. Only the beginning. There are reports of terrible disasters all throughout Skylands. Yeah, well, there's gonna be another one if we don't get moving. That tornado is right on top of us. Oh, right. And we should get to safety. I'll explain everything on the way. I like the way Stealth Elf moves. That's her uh, actual Skylander's name, by the way, Stealth Elf. Try saying that ten times fast, jeez. But she definitely stalks around like, you know, like someone sneaking around, trying to get the drop on her enemies. Which uh, seems appropriate for a ninja. So yeah, here we go, mission accomplished. As I said, completion is not my main goal, i.e. the center column. Because, uh, well, they want me to clear that level in under 3 minutes and 48 seconds, and, well, speedrunning was never my game. So, I'm gonna try and collect everything I can for you, and, uh, show you how to get all the nice items to round out your collection, and, uh, fill you in on how the story goes, but other than that, that's, uh, that's probably about as far as I'm gonna take it. Um, one more thing to take care of, I think, before I sign off for this episode. If I recall correctly, I get to go to the ruins. For as long as anyone could remember, Skylands was protected by the wisest and most powerful beings of all, the Portal Masters. And the greatest among them was Master Eon. He and his Skylanders protected the Core of Light. For centuries, the Core of Light had enriched the world, holding at bay the Darkness, the ultimate force behind all evil. But now, Eon was the last portal master, and growing weaker with age, he knew it was only a matter of time before the darkness would return. Oh, that's some really literal Eon darkness. Into those clouds. Is something wrong? Have you ever known dark, boiling, ominous clouds to be a good thing, Hugo? Well, there was this one time in Albuquerque. I won't bore you with the details. Take your station, Hugo. Skylanders, the darkness has come. Prepare for battle! I imagine that Hugo's station is cowering in the sewers. Soon am I waiting for this day to take my revenge! Soon you will all bow down before me! Chaos! K-A-O-S! Chaos! I'm glad that he spelled it out for us. Just in case you wanted to fill out a comment card for me. It looks ridiculous. Uh, what? Eh, my head is awesome, I tell you! Fear it! Fear my giant floating head! See? I told you the head isn't scary enough. Silence, Clubshanks! You're spoiling my evil mood. You thought you had banished me to the Outlands? Ha <laughs> I, Chaos! have returned to destroy the core of light and rule Skylands as its emperor. And you are so old and weak now, Eon. There is nothing you can do about it. I've told you before, Chaos. You and the darkness have no power here. Oh, is that so? We'll just see about that. Minions? 
Skylanders! <laughs> That seemed unnecessarily circuitous. Could have just jumped, really. Heck, Spyro has wings, he could have just flown down. Are you supposed to eat those? I was never clear on that. Doesn't look like I was far off on my guess there about what Hugo's station does. Okay, I worked it out. We're losing. Maybe we should go to plan B. No, Clumshanks. I have a much better idea. Initiate Plan Z! Not the core! No! It seems like a really obvious target, considering that it keeps order to the entire universe. It's all fun in games until someone loses the core of light. Mr. Young? Anyone? And that was the day the core of light was scattered to the far corners of the universe, and Skylands lost its greatest protectors. But there is more to their story. As the Skylanders were drawn farther and farther away from the magic of Skylands, they began to shrink until they reached your world, waiting for you to find them. And Master Eon, he survived the blast. And somehow they all managed to find their way into plastic containers at your nearest Toys R Us. But without his body, he couldn't fight chaos and the darkness. But now we have you, young Portal Master. Oh man, don't break the fourth wall, it's very fragile. Thank the portals, we made it back in one piece. So as you can see, with our core of light destroyed, Skylands is in great danger. I'm sure that tornado was no accident. This is clearly the work of chaos. Accidental tornado, huh? It's chaos. a new one. Oh, that guy really grinds my gears. If you're taking down chaos, you can count me in. Glad to hear it, Flynn. Callie agreed to help too. Every time I see Sheik lurking Callie. in the background in one of these cutscenes, oh, I feel like she's like sizing up everyone to, you know, Interesting take things. a stab at them. If you know if what I mean. She's involved in this. Count me double in. Splendid. When you're ready, go with Flynn to Perilous Pastures. I'll prep the balloon for takeoff. And if you bring back any more of those those sheep, I'll never forgive you. He never really falls up on that. Anyway, welcome to... I think they're just called The Ruins? This is sort of our hub world for the entire game. Now that we've taken on that mammoth first episode and all of the cutscenes and dialogue it entails, we've uh, found our way to normalcy in the game. But uh, yeah, I think I'm going to take a break here, and uh, I'll meet you guys back here right in the center of The Ruins. Uh, next time for some more Let's Play Skylanders Spyro's Adventure. Thanks for joining me.